So Professor Jeff Palmer is um, a professor emeritus in the School of Life Sciences at Herat White University in Edinburgh, uh, Scotland. He's also a human rights activist. He discovered the Bali abrasion process while he was a researcher at Herat White University under the guidance of Professor Dr. Anna M. MacLeod. In, in 1998, Palmer became the fourth person and the first European to be honored with the American Society of Brewing Chemists Award of Distinction considered the Nobel Prize of Brewing. In 1989, Sir Jeff Palmer uh, became the first black professor in Scotland, becoming a professor emeritus after he retired in 2005. He was knighted in the 2014 New Year Honours. And I was very pleased to have um, a seat um, and discuss with so Professor Jeff Palmer on his innovation uh, in brewing and what that means for science and technology. And I'm so pleased to share it with you um, today. And um, you know, so Professor Jeff, Jeff Palmer is also so pleased that you're able to engage with um, his work. And um, you know, I, I do hope you find some um, inspiration from that discussion and also some insight on what technology and innovation means for the food system. How the Romans moved around from Europe to Asia was because they had cereals, so they could move and plant and harvest and move. So they always had a constant food source. So cereals are, are very old in terms of um, domestication. And my research was mainly on barley, although I've done some work on wheat and the African grain sorghum. Um, the barley work I did was, it's interesting that when I was at uh, my first university doing botany, we never studied cereals <laughs> because cereals were regarded as man-made and thus not scientifically um, important in terms of looking at the behaviour of natural plants. And that's one of the things which has changed. And also looking at fruits like these, they were not studied in any great detail because they're regarded as man-made, <laughs> um, because they've been cultivated and domesticated, etc. However, my research was on barley and I had to learn a lot about it because I knew nothing. And, um, uh, um, and one of the things I did was to look at how the barley, um, when it was germinated, it, that process is called malting. So you take a barley grain and you germinate it, and at the end of that germination period, it digests itself in, internally. And of course, the grain produces enzymes um, that digest the, it's called the endosperm, but it's just the food reserve. And it, the food reserves in cereals are starch, protein, and, and gums. And, and, and the gums are very important because one gum especially, you'll see it on the uh, um, cereal packages, it's from oats. This gum is called beta glucan, and it, it it reduces cholesterol. So cereals have also negative aspects like gluten, <laughs> but they have very positive aspects like glucans. These are gums which help to remove um, cholesterol. So my research on barley is was to look at from the beginning of germination to the end when malt was produced. And there were concepts of how the grain did it. And the old concept was that the germ digested the, the food reserves and turned them into sugar and amino acids, which yeast use for fermentation. So the grain is providing nutrient for yeast, which then change sugar in the grain into alcohol. And that's the essence of the malting, brewing, distilling processes. Now the, 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 the concept of how the grain did it was not well known. And in science, you cannot effect good technology if you don't know the science very well. 
Um, so anything works, whether it's your car <laughs> or whether it's an industrial process. If it doesn't work very well, is that the science isn't right. And the more correct the science is, the more efficient it works. So finding out the science is critical. And that's a, that's a, a concept that I've used that in my book on cereals, I've got it at the front, it says, technology is science that works. So I had to find out the science of the grain, you know, to really look at it, to say, how does it do all this stuff? You know, going from starch, protein, to amino acid, sugars, and vitamins. The grain produces a lot of vitamins too. The general concept was that it's the germ that did it. And I had a very close look, looking at the grain every two hours, two hours for 24 hours every day for about, uh, God knows how long, <laughs> but a long time. And I came to the conclusion that the germ didn't do it. <laughs> it was, believe it or not, the bran. And that's the skin of the grain. And um, that caused a great stir worldwide <laughs> because everybody believed that it was the germ. It's, it's very complicated in that the germ produces a hormone and this hormone goes to the bran and tells the bran to produce enzymes. And that was my concept. And um, I then, quite logically, when I left my, the university, finished my PhD, I went to work in industry, in a scientific um, uh, laboratory. And I thought, if the bran did it, then if I could stimulate the brand quickly or early, because the grain takes seven days to digest itself, but if I could stimulate the brand on day one, instead of waiting for the germ to do it slowly, then the grain should process quicker. And that's exactly what I did. I, I found that I scarified the grain and it allowed the hormone to get in because the hormone wouldn't get in. The, 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 the pericarp, the, the fruit wall, this there, yep. it's got a, a fatty layer on the outside and that fatty layer, that's what protects the fruit. If you damage that, the fruit rots. Mm -hmm. So I had to damage that skin on, um, on, on, on the grain. Because cereal grains are fruits, they're not seeds. <laughs> and and um, I did that and um, it worked. And uh, I started with one grain and then I went to 10 grams and then we built a machine, ultimately, that did 10 tons an hour. <laughs> 10 tons an hour. So that's the importance of science, driving technology because it worked with one grain and the science was right for one grain it's also right for 10 tons an hour and one of the biggest breweries in Britain called Bass and the other one was Allied Breweries they I know Bass had eight machines a braiding machines and they were each machine was doing 10 tons an hour they were running 24 hours a day so that's a, a story of science driving technology. And what is even more important than that was that I, I read a scientific paper recently and there was this controversy, whether it's the germ or the bran. The point is now the bran is accepted as having, is the tissue that uh, has the enzymes that mm -hmm delivers the digestion and this is work in Australia and, and, and other parts of the world they're using the bran as, um, as a source because it is pure it is one cell type the bran and which is unusual because within this fruit there are probably different cell types and in your liver um, the liver is one cell type in, in certain areas and they can use that for research. 
But if they took the skin, you know, it's not one cell type. And for doing research to find out how cells really work, it's always best to work on one cell type. So you're not getting um, mixed results. And um, the research now being done on the brain is to look at how hormones influence changes in cells because that happens in our body. And the, the brain is now being used to look at how hormones influence, you know, hormones influence cell um, behavior. So it started with barley grain being used to make malt <laughs> and it's now gone to very complex biochemistry. So, you know, that's a very good example that if you get the science right, it drives technology. And therefore with your work, it's the same. If you get, understand the science and the science is about, you know, using the food waste to produce specific, um, um, compounds, whether they are whether calcium or um, potassium or phosphate or whatever, um, and it's used for making fertilizers which are, are natural as opposed to using chemicals. So, you know, I support anything um, which is science based and it's making technology that benefits humanity.